Good morning. Today we are going to be using the quadratic formula and the discriminant to solve uh, quadratic equations. Now, if you guys, uh, first let's look at the discriminant. And part of the quadratic formula is the discriminant. And the discriminant will tell us how many solutions and the type of solutions that we are going to be having. The discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. And if it's greater than zero, that means if it's positive, it's going to have two real solutions. It's going to cross the x-axis at two points. If it's equal to zero, that means that's going to have one real solution. It's crossing the x-axis at one point. And if it's less than zero or negative, that means that's not crossing the x-axis. The two solutions are imaginary solutions. So they, the solutions will have an i as part of it. So it can be positive, having two real solutions. It can be equal to zero, so it has one real solution. Or if it's negative, it's going to have two imaginary solutions. Let's look at example number one. And I type two examples. If you guys notice on these two examples that we have here, 2x squared plus 5x plus 4 equal to 0. A, B, and C. We basically just plug it in. Once we simplify, if it's negative, we are going to have two imaginary solutions. If we plug it into the discriminant and we get 0, that means that we're going to have one real solution. So let's look at example number one. Example number one is asking us to find the discriminant and to decide whether it has two real solutions, one real solution, or two imaginary solutions. Letter A. I'm going to use B squared minus 4AC, the discriminant. Remember, this is the letter A. B is negative 6 and C is 3. And I'm just going to substitute. B is negative 6 squared minus 4. A is 2. C is 3. Negative 6 squared is 36 minus 8 times 3. will be 36 minus 24, which will give us 12. 12 is a positive. So that means that we have two real solutions. For letter B, we're going to go through the same process. We're going to use the discriminant to determine how many solutions and the type of solutions that we have. This is A, B is negative 4, C is negative 4. A will be 4, B will be negative 8, C will be negative 4. And we're going to substitute. So b is negative 8 squared minus 4, a is 4, c is negative 4. Negative 8 times negative 8 is positive 64. Multiply those out, gives me negative 16 times negative 4, gives me 64, plus 64. That will give us 128. And this is positive, so that means that we have two real solutions. And let's go and work out the go ahead and work out the last one. See what you get. Remember, positive two real solutions, zero will give you one real solutions, and if it's negative, that'll give you two imaginary solutions. Go and pause it, see what you get, and we can compare answers. Great. So we have b squared minus 4ac, a, b, and c. b is negative 2 squared minus 4, a is negative 4, and c is negative 1. I must simplify. Negative 2 squared is 4, plus 16 times negative 1. 4 minus 16 
that will give us a negative 12. It's negative. So that means that we have two imaginary solutions. Let's continue with the back side. Example number two. And before we get to example number two, we have the quadratic formula. Now many of you guys have seen the quadratic formula as x equals negative b plus or minus the square root or b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. But as I work through the process, I find it easier when I find the discriminant first and then just plug it in the equation. It just makes a shorter process. Uh, if you want to plug it in uh, as part of the equation and work through it out, you will get exactly the same answer. But as you guys notice on the example that I have here, I find the discriminant first and then I just plug it into the equation. That gives me the square root of 25 is 5 and because I have plus or minus, I must separate into 2 one with the plus, one with the minus, and that will give me the two solutions. Let's look at example number two. Solve the following quadratic equation by using the quadratic formula. So my formula is x is equal to negative b plus or minus that discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a. Let me go and find my discriminant. My discriminant is b squared minus 4ac, same thing that we did on the first example. a is 1, b is negative 2, and c is negative 15. So b is negative 2, a is 1, and c is negative 15. Remember that we're going to square this first, so it gives me 4. Multiply that out, gives me negative 4 times negative 15. 4, that gives me positive 60, so 64. Now we can plug it in. Negative b. Remember, when we talk about negative b, that means the opposite of b. b is negative 2, so this will be positive 2, plus or minus the square root of the discriminant, which is 64, all over 2 times a. a is 1. Let's go and simplify this. So 2 plus or minus square of 8 is, square of 64 is 8, not square of 8, but just 8, all over 2. And then I'm going to have two solutions, one with the positive, one with the negative. So it'll be 2 plus 8 over 2, and 2 minus 8 over 2. 2 plus 8 is 10 over 2, which is equal to 5. 2 minus 8 is negative 6 over 2, which is negative 3. So my solutions are 5, 2, 4, 5. Remember, my solutions are also my x-intercepts or the roots. So one of them is 5, the other one is negative 3, 1, 2, 3. And it's positive, so my parabola will be facing up. If I want to be able to find the lowest point, then I can find my vertex. But for now, I just want you guys to keep in mind that your solutions are your x-intercepts. Let's go and move on to example number two. On 3a, it says, solve the following quadratic equations by using the quadratic formula. Some of you guys might be tempted to factor. But remember, most of the time that you guys are dealing with a quadratic formula, you will not be able to factor it, and you'll be forced to use the quadratic formula. First, I want to be able to make it equal to zero so I can find the values of a, b, and c. I'm going to move my 10 to the left becomes a positive. It's different from completing the square. If it was completing the square, this will be set. We want to use the quadratic formula, so we need to find the value of a, b, and c. This will be guys, x squared plus 6x. That becomes a positive 10 and that's equal to 0. So I need to use my quadratic formulas 
x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of the discriminant all over 2a. My discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. b is 6 minus 4, a will be 1 and c will be 10. 36 minus 4 times 10, 36 minus 40 is negative 4. That will be the discriminant. So we have x is equal to negative 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 4. We have all over 2 times a which is 1. Now when we write this down we want to be able to separate our fractions. Same thing with that we did with imaginary numbers. So we have negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 4 because we have a negative inside, it's going to be a i. The square root of 5 will be 2, so it'll be 2 i. And we're going to separate our fractions, divide by 3, divide by 3, and we're going to reduce or divide by 2. 2 times 1 is 2. We're going to reduce, so it gives us x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus 2 divided by 2 will be 1 or just i. And we don't need to separate just because this is an imaginary number. Go ahead and try letter B, see what you get and we can compare answers. Go ahead and pause it. Great. So for letter B, if you notice it's not equal to zero. First thing that I want to do, I want to be able to move my 7 to the left. That's going to become a positive and let's go and rearrange it. So we have 2x squared plus 7x plus 6 equal to zero. Our formula is x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of the discriminant all over 2a. So the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac, b is 7, a is 2, and c is 6. 7 squared is 49 minus 8 times 6 will be 49 minus 48 so my discriminant is 1 so I'm plugging in 1 for the discriminant x is equal to negative b the opposite of 7 is negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 1 all over 2a which is 2 we have x is equal to negative 7 plus or minus square root of 1 is just 1 and I'm going to separate my fraction so it'll be uh, actually I'm going to keep it together so 2 times 2 will be 4 that means that I'm going to have two solutions x is equal to negative 7 plus 1 over 4 or x is equal to negative 7 minus 1 over 4 Now notice that I'm going to have to reduce, so x is equal to, or just simplify, negative 7 plus 4 is negative 6 over 4, reduce, so negative 3 over 2. That's my first solution. I'm going to simplify, so it gives me x is equal to negative 8 over 4, which is negative 2. And those will be my both solutions. So this will conclude the lesson. Uh, please email me if you have any questions, and have a great day.